a group of eminent and concerned Nigerian academics and activists uh, are advocating the wholesale overhaul of all sectors in Nigeria to prevent the country from further sliding into complete chaos and anarchy. In a statement titled Nigeria at the Crossroads, a policy direction, the group of which includes academics and rights activists like Professor Jibrin Ibrahim, Dr. Kole Shatima, uh, Clement Wankwa, Dr. Usman Bugaje, and NLB, among others, uh, cited incompetence and a lack of empathy on the part of Nigeria's leadership for the worsening corruption, poverty, insecurity, and economic decline among Nigerians. They propose uh, short, medium, and long-term measures uh, to revitalize the economy, curb poverty and corruption, strengthen governance, and address insecurity. We're joined now by the senior fellow of the Center for Democracy and Development, Professor uh, Jibrin Ibrahim. Uh, thank you for joining us on Newsnight uh, tonight. Uh, very important points that you raised there, you know, uh, and uh, making some recommendations. Hopefully we can break down some of your recommendations. But let's, you know, look at it from the beginning of this democracy, 1999. Nigerians have been calling for dividends of democracy uh, and to bad governance and what have you. But to what extent really do we as a people desire these things in a way that will reflect in our leadership and the way they conduct themselves in office? I think one way of looking at it is to realize that Nigerians have always been very deeply committed to democracy. But we are finding out now that our leaders have never been committed to democracy. They've been committed to the acquisition of power and the use of power for self-aggrandizement, but not governance. Governance is about providing for the people. It's about addressing the problems that affect the people. It's about improving lives, livelihoods, and people's welfare. And these are what we have not had. And the tragedy of Nigeria is when you count back from 1999, each regime that comes into power, each government that comes into power, is worse than the previous one. Obasanjo, that we criticize so heavily, is now standing upright as the most competent and committed government we have had. Hmm. The, the person who succeeded him unfortunately didn't have the health to do much. Then Jonathan came out hmm. and he turned out to be much worse. And we were saying with Jonathan, this is the first university graduate that's ruling this country. Uh -huh. We will see evidence of that education in the governance, it turned out to be all about uh, corruption. Jonathan mm. left, then Buhari came out, definitely mm. worse than uh, Jonathan. And now, Nigerians are in their hundreds of thousands in the streets saying that the current uh, Tinubu administration is the worst we have seen when you take your index as misery and suffering of the people. Mm. How can we sustain a country when each government that comes in is worse than the all the previous one. ones? That's why I actually asked the question as to whether indeed, is it about the leadership? Is it that the, we've just not been able to vote for the right leaders? Or is the problem really with us as a people? And it's reflected in, you know, in, in government. But maybe you'll <laughs> respond to that after Sulai asked his uh, question. Sulai, you were going to ask. Well, uh, you, you know, Nigeria has actually gone through a lot. Uh, banditry, uh, Boko Haram, uh, insecurity, and uh, the corruption you spoke about, the government of uh, good luck, Jonathan. Uh, perhaps uh, what are those key factors, uh, if you would, uh, perhaps critical three, that you think that the Tinubu administration should start looking into at the moment that will also, as they fix, give more voice to the people in a democracy? What we've done in our memo is to give an integrated argument to say that Nigeria is in deep misery and suffering because 
insecurity is too high and the economy is not working for the people. Now, why do we have these two problems? Because the level of corruption in government has continued to rise each year. And because corruption is rising, there's no way you can guarantee security for two reasons. One is you can't do procurements that uh, enable the government to do its work because the resources are filtered away. The second thing is that Nigerian citizens are also watching. The picture they see of those in government are people who are stealing the wealth of the nation. And then they ask themselves one question. How come they are able to steal the wealth of the country and we can't? Oh, they have security with guns. We don't. So what have Nigerians been doing? They have been procuring guns. And they have mm. been using these guns against their neighbors, against people they don't know, against the state, against security, against everybody. So it's the demonstration effect when the leadership does not live up to the expectation of the people, people learn lessons. And lessons can be positive, lessons can be negative. Because the corruption is so high, Nigerians are also learning very terrible lessons of what they will do, which is the ideology of uh, self-help. So our key argument is this. Everybody knows that the center of corruption is in government. And what the leader of government <coughs> needs to do is to seriously sanction those among his team that have been shown in public to be corrupt. We have had ministers in this particular government mm. where massive allegations have been released against them. And it's now a year and nothing has happened. Nice. This is a signal that this government is not ready to punish those among them who are corrupt. Mm. And that's a powerful message. Once the president doesn't come out openly, clearly, without ambiguity, and shows his own team that it's not business as usual, and accountability will count in this government, you mess up with public resources, you go to jail. Right. That's the signal all Nigerians have been waiting for, and that's the signal we are not seeing. Uh, rather, unfortunately, I mean, especially when you put it that way. Now, you narrowed it down to the issues of incompetence and a lack of empathy on the part of, you know, the nation's uh, leadership. Uh, I mean, expatiate on that and how it's fundamental to Nigeria's problems. You see, the question of competence is very basic in good governance because you need to be able to search for teams for people who can deliver on the mission you give to them. Mm -hmm. And the proof of this is when you look at the first tenure of Tinubu as governor of Lagos State and his second tenure as governor of Lagos State. All analysts are agreed that he was very successful in choosing people with proven competence and precisely because of that, there was a marked increased capacity of the government of Lagos to deliver services to the people. Mm -hmm. This time around, it is also very clear to all analysts that the calculation in government is that we want a political team that will guarantee we remain in office for a second term. And that competence was definitely not at the center of consideration in the choice of the key players in the current government. And we are now suffering because of that choice, that political decision that has been made. So the question of competence is very clear. But I think the whole question of a government is that our constitution is clear. 
the purpose of government mm. is to provide for the security and welfare of citizens. These are the two things all Nigerian citizens are saying. We are not seeing it. We are not seeing improved security, and we are not seeing improved welfare. Therefore, the verdict is failure. And if you are failing in your key mission, mm. it means there is a critical tipping point that's approaching. And that's why we talk of Nigeria being at the crossroads. So what does this uh, yeah, yeah. president need to do? Sorry, Salah. No, no, that's uh, fine. Uh, what does this president need to do now to salvage the situation and to bring back the trust of the people back in not just this administration, but maybe going forward? What are the fundamentals that need to be? I think the first thing that needs to happen is to show a clear commitment to combating corruption within the team itself. Once the president will have the boldness and the insight to do that, people will begin to relax and feel the perspective, the future would be bright because steps are being taken. And if the level of anger and frustration is so high now, is that is because people are not seeing any steps being taken. Take this example of promises almost on a daily basis about provisions and palliatives made for the poor. Yeah. We live in this society. There's none of us who doesn't know poor people. And you do your survey around those you know. Mm. No poor person has ever benefited from any of these things governments talk about. So it is not impressive for government to be saying, we are doing this for the poor, when the poor never ever see what mm. is being claimed. Do, do you have a recipe to arrest him that? Mm. Because now they, he has just rejected the humanitarian affairs uh, uh, ministry. Mm. And uh, you know, Nigeria has a very big youth population and uh, they've been talking. Now that you uh, have been able to put your finger on some of the key concerns, which is implementation, mm. uh, what do you think uh, that the Tinubu administration should start looking at? I think the point has to be made very clearly. The government is not unaware of what's happening to the failure of its programs. Mm. This uh, food item, cereals and rice that are being offered, the monetary contributions being made for the poor. We all know exactly what has happened to them. When food is being supplied, it's given to state governors, who give it to their local government chairman, who then pass it through the ward chairman of the ruling party in the state. So you know you are handing over this directly to politically uh, powerful individuals who believe that that is their reward mm. for their party being in power. So there isn't even an attempt to say, we have a register of the poor in this country. The register exists, but that register has never been used for allocation. And government can do it because it has the register. We spent 10 years in this country doing a detailed register of the poor. They know who they are, mm -hmm. and they know where they are, and they have their telephone numbers. But they never even make the effort to reach them. And I'm saying the onus of proof is on government now. And every Nigerian is looking at them. If the poor don't start to see a change, they don't start seeing benefits, yeah. then these people are saying, well, we draw a line with government mm. is the end of public trust and now is everybody for themselves and when it comes to that stage then i think it will be a crisis where we move beyond the tipping point we hope things don't get uh, to absolutely. that absolutely that's yeah. why we're having this conversation mm. now we'd like to thank you for your time professor uh, jibrin ibrahim many thanks for your insights on news night <laughs>